I was wondering what your process is to for the very beginning of a song, whether it would start with a melody or a bunch of chords. I used to be more reliant on um, keyboards rather than piano because their sounds had atmosphere and they would, when you play something, it would make you want to play this next. You know, like, and so I, I used to play around with that an awful lot. So almost like the feeling of the music rather than the notes themselves yeah. would create the song. Yeah, and then, you know, but then at the same time, without any of that, you just start playing on piano and you get a different kind of song, you know. So um, it's all, all the different kind of the tools you got will make it different, you know. Why do you think you still write songs if, you, if you've, uh, presumably you've got over the divorce now? <laughs> that was a while ago. Three, mate, three. <laughs> <laughs> they keep to. coming. Is that what, what? What do you think spurs you on to keep on writing? Well, to see if you can do it again a bit better. You know, I mean, it's like I'm always more interested in the thing that I'm going to write than the thing I did write. You okay. Know? And what's that like hearing hearing your old songs? Does it feel like looking at old photographs of yourself, or? Yeah, well my my six year old. He wants to. You know, he's particularly. Um, He'll listen to a song like No Son of Mine from Genesis, or he'll listen to a song like Driving the Last Spike, which is about <laughs> about the making of the English Railroads, you know, Genesis song. And then he'll say, what, what does that mean? What, what is that? What, why did you say that? I said, well, I, I just said it because it popped out of my mouth. Or why do you go, ha, 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 mama? Why do you do that? Because the rest of the song is not like that. <laughs> kind of hard questions <laughs> to answer. Yeah, I know. I, I sort of say, well, I, I, you know, at the time, that's what I did, and everybody seemed to like it, so we did it. <laughs> but <laughs> great question. I guess also what you're saying is that there isn't necessarily a, a clear logic to uh, to why you went. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> well, there's, uh, there is a there's a completely clear logic to the story, but I mean, uh, it's difficult to explain that that's why you did it, as opposed to just everyone laughing and then you getting on and not doing it. You know, you know. In fact, our our, our engineer at the time brought in Grandmaster Flash the message while we were recording while we were writing Mama, and you, you put it on. And this is like the early days of rap, you know, I mean, you listen to it now, and it's like very, very different from the stuff you hear now. But it's like a, you know, it's like a jungle sometimes. It makes me wonder how I keep on going under. <laughs> and we laugh. We thought, what a fantastic thing to put in a song. Just a laugh. <laughs> so I went out there, and we were writing, and, um, and we would get to this bit, like the drum machine was going, and it was like just really cool, and I went, <laughs> and they all looked around, you know, so that's good, I like that, you know. So eventually it became part of the song. So the message inspired Mama in yes. inadvertently. And you tell people that and they'll think, I'm cra you'll think you're crazy. You know. Well, life I takes think. unexpected turns. I, mean, I, I imagine when you started, you didn't think you'd be a, you know, a player on the hip-hop scene. Hip-hop, I remember seeing a program uh, just flipping through the channel one day, and Ice-T, I think it was, back in the early days of, of uh, rap, he was, uh, there was a documentary about him, and they were in his living room, and he said, oh, yeah, and this, this cynical journalist said, well, what have you got in your record collection then? And he found my albums, and he said, what, the, what is Phil Collins doing in your record collection? He said, they're, they're messing with my film. Man. <laughs> and I thought, my God, this is, this is nice, you know, because you get so used to what you read about yourself that actually hearing it from, from a musician, in, in music, there is none of that. Yeah, it's more open-minded. Yeah, it's just music, good or bad, you know. Does it feel strange when you uh, when you realise that these songs have become such public property? I mean, these songs are so well known, you know, something, well, you could take In the Air Tonight, you know, you might be driving down a road in Georgia or somewhere and it mm. can come on the radio. It's no longer, in a way, it's no longer yours. I, I, I automatically assume, I mean, I, I just can't get myself into the other way of thinking about it, but I automatically, when I leave the country, they stop playing the records. You know, you go to America and you promote something and they play, play it. Yeah, there's yeah, a see if you're right. Right. <laughs> Put it away till it comes back, you know. And then someone will say, oh, I was listening to, you know, I was in the car today. There's someone in America and I'm here. Say, oh, I heard you, I went, two stations were playing two of your things back to back. It was extraordinary. And I think, really? You mean life goes on when you're not there? We talked a little bit about the Tarzan commission with the song. Yeah. Can you just tell me a bit about how that came about? I got a phone call saying, would I like to do the music, write the music for a Disney movie? Now, I mean, uh, you kind of, you got to understand that, that Disney, my brother, my older brother is a, is a cartoonist and the animators were his heroes. My sister is an, was an ice skater and she skated in Wembley every year. 
we had Dopey living with us, you know. We had little Kenny Baker living at my house. Uh, he was playing Dopey and Snow White and Seven Dwarfs. The dog didn't know what to make of him at all. But, but he was living at our house. So Disney, for me, is like something that I've... I was riding the bike and my dad let go of the saddle when he was singing, hey, diddle diddle diddle, and actors, you know. I've got a lot of mm. history with that. Is that from the start? So um, when they asked me to write a m a music for a movie, I thought, God, this, you know, I'm suddenly being asked to become a member of a club that I never thought I'd be a member of. So I said no originally. I said, I can't do that. I can't do that. I'm not good enough for that. And I spoke to the music guy, the guy that puts people with the movies, and he said, y listen, I, you can do it. I said, I, I can't write. I can't be like Alan Menken. I can't do those comedy songs. You know, be my guest, be my guest. I can't do that. He said, well, we don't want you to do that. Otherwise, we'd get Alan Menken to do it. What we want you to do is be you, but write it to the movie. So suddenly, I saw things from a different perspective. Th you know, they, when you do the, something like a Disney movie, they, they'll give you a, a, a three or four maybe pages of, of an outline of a story. And they say, we may want a song there. Probably a song there, a song there, the baby's crying, yes, we're going to want a song there for the ape to sing. I think I'm going to write a song for an ape to sing, right? So, okay, I don't do that often. So I sent them the demos of the songs, and the director started to fall in love with the demos. And uh, it was then suggested that I would sing in the movie. And I said, you're crazy. You know, people have gone to go and see the movies expecting the ape to sing, you know. You can't suddenly have Phil Collins' voice. It's going to take them back to somewhere else, you know. And in fact, we had the sort of 11th hour thing where Glenn Close, who did the voice for Carla, who was the mother, ape, I had to, I sat in the, you know, in the studio with her to teach her it. And um, she was much more Broadway than pop. And she couldn't get the rhythm of the thing. I mean, we've, we've, we, you know, it's, a, it's all upbeat. And there's, no, there's nothing on one. Come stop your crying, it will be right. Just take my hand. She couldn't handle it. So uh, I ended up singing it because of that, really. But anyway, I'll try to amble through this. Mm -hmm. 